Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is solved examples on two port network parameters. In the earlier video, we have done the derivation of two port network parameters. In this session, we will study how to solve numericals as far as impedance and admittance parameters are concerned. First numerical, suppose it is asked to calculate the Z parameters that is impedance parameters of the given network. This is the given network. For the reference, I have written the defining equations of Z parameters that is equation A and B. These are the defining equations of Z parameters. What we are supposed to do? We have to calculate value of Z11, Z12, Z21 and Z22 which are known as Z parameters. Now, do remember the basic things. For Z parameters, always and always apply KVL. It doesn't mean that this is the only way to solve the numericals on Z parameters, but it is the simplest technique. Now for KVL, we will be using two simple rules we will study while solving the numericals. Then this is the given network. The notations are already given in the question. If not given, keep in mind, these, these terminals are denoted by 1, 1 dash. Output terminals are denoted by 2, 2 dash. The directions of currents I1 and I2 is fixed in case of two port parameter. I1 is moving inside, I2 is also moving towards the network. Now, I have to apply the KVL. So to apply the KVL, that means I have to apply a loop analysis. I will have to mark the loop currents. This is the direction of current given in the question. So stick to this correct uh, direction. I will mark this loop current as I1. One more thing. This is the input port. So voltage available at the input port is V1. It is plus minus. Same way, voltage available at the output port is V2. It is plus minus. This is the direction of loop current I1. Then this is this is loop 1. This is the loop 2. As per our normal sequence, we would have said that 1, 2, 3. But in two port network, this is first loop input port. This is output port. So I will mark this current, this loop current as I2. This is loop 2. It's not loop 3. Why the direction is like this? Because by default, in case of two port parameters, the direction of I2 is towards the network. So I have considered loop current in the same direction as that of I2. For this middle loop, which I will call it as loop 3, you can assume directions as per your wish. I have assumed like this. This current is I3. Don't forget this middle loop is loop 3. It is not loop 2. Okay. Now, to apply KVL, I need to mark the polarities in case of each and every uh, resistance. So, for voltage source, polarities are given. That is plus minus. Through this register, current I2 flows from left to right. So, I will mark the polarities like plus minus. Keeping in mind that current always flows from positive to negative terminal. Same way, through this one over, the loop current I1 flows in downward direction. So, I will mark the polarities plus minus. Now, for this loop, again I need to mark the polarities. This is the source which is known as dependent voltage source. Diamond shaped symbol indicates it is a dependent source. If inside the symbol polarities are marked, it is known as voltage source. If arrow would have been marked, we would have called it as a current source. Presently, it is dependent voltage source whose value is 2I1. Now, this is the direction of loop current. This plus minus polarities are already given in the question. So, I am not making any change. For this one ohm, through this one ohm, current I3 flows in downward direction like this. So I will mark polarity plus minus. For this one ohm, current I3 flows in upward direction. So I will mark the polarity plus minus. Then for this second loop, this current is I2 moving from right to left. So I have marked polarities plus minus. Through this one ohm, it is top to bottom. So mark the polarities plus minus and so on. For V2, polarities are al already given. Now, to apply KVL, we have to make use of simple rules. If you are moving from positive to negative, make it negative. Mark the sign negative. If you are moving from negative to positive, consider it as a positive. These are the conventions used for voltage drops. Dear students, if you haven't yet watched the video on KVL, do watch that because KVL is applicable in all uh, remaining things. So, I will provide the link of that video in the description box. Now, I will apply uh, KVL first for loop 1. So, rule is that start from any point and come back to the same point. Now, 
let us say I will start from this one dash. I will be moving strictly. We will have to move in the direction of loop current. So one dash to one, it is minus two plus. So minus two plus is plus, and value of voltage is V one. So I will write V one. Then for this one ohm, I am moving from plus to minus. Plus to minus is minus. I will mark minus sign. Value of resistance is one into current I one. Very simple for a resistor. You need to write the equation such that current into resistance. So I have written value of resistance into current. Polarity is minus because we are moving from plus to minus. For this one, this is plus minus. So I will mark minus sign. Value of resistance is one. Now there are two currents flowing through this one ohm. One is I one which is moving in downward direction through this one ohm, and second is I three which is moving in upward direction. both the directions are opposite to each other in such cases perform subtraction but whether i have to consider i1 minus i3 or i3 minus i1 make it very simple if you are in loop 1 give priority to loop current 1 so this value of current i will write it as i1 minus i3 this is for uh, one ohm resistance there is no resistance over here and we have reached up to this point from where we have started writing the equation So that is equals to zero. Let us simplify this equation. So V one minus one I one. So simply I will write I one minus one into I one. I will write I one minus minus become plus plus I three is equals to zero. So it is V one minus two I one plus I three is equals to zero. Say this is equation number one. What I did, I have applied KVL to loop one, and I got this equation. Now. For loop two, do remember loop two is the output loop. This loop again, you need to move in the direction of current itself. Start from any point and come back to the same point. Let us start from two dash. I will have to move like this in the direction of current. So, if you are uh, starting from two dash, it is two dash to two minus two plus. So it is plus. So I will write V two. Then plus two minus. So plus two minus is minus sign. Value of resistance is one. Value of current through this one ohm is I two. So it is one I two. Then plus two minus. First mark minus sign. Value of resistance is one. Now through this resistance, I two is moving in downward direction. I three is also moving in downward direction. Two currents are flowing through this one ohm, and both the currents are in same direction. If the currents are in same direction, perform addition. So I will write I two plus I three is equals to zero. Let us simplify this equation. So it is V two minus I two minus I two. One into I two is simply I two minus I three is equals to zero. This gives me V two minus two I two. Minus I three is equals to zero. Say equation number two. What I am supposed to do? I have to make use of these reference equations A and B to calculate value of Z parameters. Now this equation contains V one, I one, and I two. Similarly, this also contains V two, I one, and I two. But equations one and two contains V one, I one, V two, I two, and one extra term that is I three. That means I will have to convert I three in terms of I one and I two. How to do it? Very simple trick. We have applied KVL to loop one and loop two. Let us apply KVL to the middle loop. So this loop we have denoted by loop three. So I will write over here. Apply KVL for loop three. We have already marked the polarities for loop three. Start from any point. Keep in mind this is the voltage source. In case of voltage source, you have to Directly put the value. So start from this point. You will have to move in the direction of current strictly. So if you are starting from this point, you are moving from minus to plus. Minus to plus is plus. Value of voltage source is two I one. This is the value of voltage source. So you need to consider it as it is. So this value is two I one. Then plus to minus minus sign according to this rule. Value of resistance is one. Same technique through this one ohm. Both the currents I two and I three are flowing, and they are in same direction. If the currents are in same direction, perform addition. So I three plus I two. There is no resistance through this branch. Then come back to this again. Plus two minus. Right minus sign. Value of resistance is one. Now 
I3 is moving in upward direction through this one ohm, whereas I1 is moving in downward direction. Both are in opposite direction. If direction is opposite, perform subtraction. But you are applying KVL to loop 3. So give priority to this loop current. So I will write I3 minus I1. It is not I1 minus I3 because I am writing equation for loop 3. So give priority to this current is equals to 0. Let us simplify this equation. So 2I1 minus I3 minus I2 minus I3 plus I1 minus of minus become plus I1 is equals to 0. So this gives me 3I1 that is 2 plus 1I1 that is 3I1 minus I2 minus 2I3 is equals to 0. So from this equation if I will transfer 2I3 at the RHS I will get 2I3 is equals to 3I1 minus I2. Therefore I3 is equals to 3 by 2 I1 minus I2 by 2. If you simplify this 3 by 2 is 1.5 therefore I will get I3 is equals to 1.5 I1 minus 1 by 2 I2 that means I2 by 2 that is minus 0 0.5 I2. This is say equation number 3. What I did applying KVL to this middle loop I have generated equation of I3 in terms of I1 and I2 put equation 3 in equation 1. What is my aim? I will have to eliminate this I3 from equation 1 and 2. So first put equation 3 in equation 1. This is equation 1. In place of I3 I need to put this value. So equation will be V1 minus 2I1 plus and I will, I will have to put the value of I3. So it is 1.5I1 minus 0.5 I2 is equals to 0. Simplify this equation so it becomes V1 minus 0.5 I1 minus 2 plus 1.5 is minus 0.5 minus 0.5 I2 is equals to 0. Now keep in mind I have to refer I have to compare it with equations A and B. So in this equation A V1 is alone term at the LHS. Rest all the terms are at RHS. So rearrange this equation accordingly. So I will get V1 is equals to 0.5 I1 plus 0.5 I2. What I did, I have transferred this, these two terms at the RHS. Say this is equation number 4. Now compare equations 4 and equations A. Compare these two equations. Why? Because equation A is for V1. Similarly equation 4 is for V1. Now in equation A with I1 I have Z11, in equation 4 with I1 I have 0.5, so simply Z11 is equals to 0.5. This is the first answer. Same way in equation A with I2 I have Z12, here in equation 4 with I2 I have 0.5, so Z12 is equals to 0.5. This is the second Z parameter. Same trick I have to use what I did I put equation 3 in equation 1 and I have compared the resultant equation with equation A to generate these two parameters. Now similarly put equation 3 in equation 2. The same technique we are supposed to apply. So if I will do it like this if I will put equation 3 in equation 2. So this is equation 2 in place of I3 I have to put the values so resultant equation will be V2 minus 2I2 minus I3 so it is minus in the bracket 1.5I1 minus 0.5I2 is equals to 0. I have simply put the value of I3 so let us simplify this V2 minus 2I2 this becomes minus 1.5 I1 minus minus become plus plus 0.5 I2 is equals to 0. Like the previous case keep only V2 at the LHS so it is V2 is equals to. All these terms I am transferring to the RHS so it becomes plus 2 I2 this becomes plus 1.5 I1 minus 0.5 I2. Therefore rearrange the terms the sequence should be I1 then I2 and so on. So first I will write the value of I1 that is coefficient of I1 is 1.5 so it is 1.5 I1. These two terms can be combined 
so 2 minus 0.5 becomes plus 1.5 i2 so let us say this is equation number 5 like the previous case i will have to compare equation 5 with equation b in equation b with i1 i have coefficient z21 so directly i can write z21 is equals to 1.5 because in equation 5 coefficient with i1 is 1.5 same way with z22 we have i2 so here with i2 we have 1.5 so z22 is equals to 1.5 and all these values are values of z impedance so unit is ohm here also you can write the unit ohm this is the way how you can solve the numericals as far as uh, z parameters are concerned uh, and keep in mind you will have to always use the kvl now let us solve one different numerical where kvl is not required next problem is suppose it is asked to calculate z parameters of this given network now i will tell you one simple trick in the last numerical there was one dependent voltage source so we directly applied kvl in all other numericals whenever there is no source i will tell you simplest technique try to convert the given network in the form of t network t network as the name indicates is like this network it is having the shape of english letter t that means uh, the network precisely will be like this this type of network if you convert the given network into this type of network there are direct formulae we will discuss it while solving the numerical first step is how can i convert this given network into this type of t network very simple logic look at the network uh, this 5 ohm and 5 ohm are in parallel because they are in different lines i hope you are aware how to do this parallel calculation of parallel combination so this can be written like this 5 parallel 5 which is 5 into 5 upon 5 plus 5 which is 25 upon 10 that gives me the value 2.5 after uh, obtaining this value replace these two registers and draw one register only in place of two registers whose value is 2.5 which is the result on top of the parallel combination of 5 ohm and 5 ohm once you will draw the circuit like this in the form of t now this this is equivalent to the t network then remaining part it's pretty simple how to do the remaining part we know the usual conventions as per the usual conventions this is 1 1 dash second port is 2 2 dash this current is i2 at the input side this current is i1 in terms of loop currents i will mark current i1 like this in terms of loop current i will mark current i2 like this now these are the ready-made formulae it makes the calculation very very easy if you just uh, convert the given network in terms of t network what are the formulae z11 is summation of impedance where current i1 flows look at the diagram through which impedances i1 is flowing it is flowing through 10 ohm as well as it is flowing through this 2.5 so directly i can write the answer i mean from the exam point of view first you need to write this formula then z11 is equals to summation of impedance where i1 flows i1 is flowing through 10 and 2.5 so it is 10 plus 2.5 that is 12.5 ohm this is the direct answer of z11 same z22 is summation of impedance where current i2 flows look at the diagram current i2 is flowing again through 10 ohm as well as this 2.5 so z22 is 10 plus 2.5 it is again 12.5 ohm now last step z11 z12 is equals to z21 is common impedance for i1 and i2 what is the common impedance for both i1 and i2 so it is 2.5 so I can directly write this answer z12 is equals to z21 is equals to 2.5 ohm. This is the simplest trick as far as the z parameters are concerned. Dear students, uh, I have explained you two different types of numericals and uh, I also explained the simplest technique of solving the numericals as far as this impedance z parameters are concerned. So that's it for today's session. Thanks. Thank you very much.